Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let me know when they're doing it. They doing it? So, Father, we bless your name. We glorify you, Father. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, that your hand continue to rest upon this ministry. And Father, we break every demonic assignment that is working against us right now in the spiritual realm. We declare and decree, Father, in the name of Jesus, he that the Son set free is free indeed. And God, have your way. Have your way. I ask you that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer to write your word upon the hearts, upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth, and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we come with you to give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' mighty, majestic name. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord God. Bless you all. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Amen. I'm going to, I'm going to sing you a song. Amen. I want to sing you a song, if it's all right with you guys, uh, because I feel like today is a good day to come in the presence of the Lord with a song. Hallelujah. Amen. And I just know that he's with us and that and because he's with us we believe that all things work together for good to them that love him. Amen. Amen. Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. God, we worship you. We bless you. We glorify you. Thank you, Father. You're my joy. You're my peace. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when my light goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. You're my joy. You're my peace. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when my light goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. cross and you bear the scars you are my bright and shining star you gave me sight that I might see the kind of man that I should be you came and died to set me free almighty God Oh, and you bear the scars. You are my bright and shining star. You gave me sight that I might see the kind of man that I should be. You came and died to set me free, Almighty God. You're my joy. You're my peace. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're the one I depend on. Well, you're the road to hope when my light goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. You're my joy, you're my peace. 
You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge, you're my rock. You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when my life goes dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing, you're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. situations right now, circumstances, even concerning your health. Amen. But don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged and don't allow your situation to cause you to doubt God. Amen. Faith comes where the will of God is known. And that's why we're here today to reveal the will of God in the area of divine health and healing. And I know I teach on this a lot. You know why? Because I am a firm believer. Because I used to be sick and God healed me. I, was, I didn't have money for the doctor. didn't have no insurance or nothing. And, and, and I just depend on God. And God spoke to me very, very, very harshly because I was crying like a little baby. <laughs> he spoke to me very harshly. He said, get up and read your Bible. And let me tell you something. That was the best thing he ever told me. Amen to get up and read my Bible. And as I begin to read my Bible, I begin to see the word like I've never seen it before. And God began to reveal the mysteries, the hidden mysteries of his word. See, the healing power is available for you and for everyone that has a need. T today, God is not has not taken that anointing out of the earth. There are people that still believe it. There are people that still uh, teach it. Then there are people that say it, it don't work for them. Why? Because they had not come to the point to believe it. That's why it doesn't work for them. Because they don't believe it. But I'm telling you that as you come to believe the word of God and as you begin to just Hold fast to what God has said. God will confirm his word with signs following. Your, your circumstance is nothing but a stepping stone for you to, to rise up and step right into God's perfect will for your life. That sickness that you're experiencing, yes, it's, it, you might be in pain, but notice what Jesus did. Jesus bore our sickness. He carried our diseases. Amen. And the curse of sickness has been eradicated when Jesus went to the cross. He took that curse to the cross with him. So when Jesus went to the cross, it, it wasn't just for our salvation. It was for our sicknesses as well. Remember, before he went to the cross, he was in the courtyard of Pontius Pilate, and they beat him. They scarred him with the whips across his back, and they put a crown of thorns upon his head. Amen? See, every part of Jesus' body was were literally bruised 
because of what man did to him. And God took that pain that he suffered and that he went through and God laid it upon him so that we don't have to carry that pain. See, God showed me that. And, I, and when I come to understand what God was showing me, it became a living reality in my, in my body. Amen. God wants you well. He wants you healed. He wants you delivered. He wants you free. But you have to want it bad enough to, to believe. You have to want it bad enough to release your faith. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You may, your healing may, may not be nowhere in sight as far as you're concerned. That's why God said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen. Because hope is somewhere out in the future. God wants you to take a hold of that, what you're hoping for, and bring it into the realm of your now. How are you going to do that? By faith. Faith is now. Now faith is the subject of things, what you're hoping for. That's that thing that's somewhere out in the future. God wants you to bring it into your presence. He wants you to, he wants you to bring it into your now. Amen. Glory to God. And I like that because you see, when I when I finally understood what God was telling me, my body was healed, and I was set free from that spirit of infirmity. And let me tell you something, folks. I'm still free. I'm still free. Glory be to God. I'm still free. Now, that don't mean that the devil didn't try to bring it upon me again, because he did. But I realized that when God set you free, he that the Son set free is what? Is free indeed. And so I began to say, well, devil, <clears throat> I know that you're mad, but that's okay. You'll get over it. But I'm not. I, I said that, that that pain you try to bring back upon my body. I said I, I don't. I don't receive it. So in the name of Jesus, I command you to take it back. It's yours. You can have it. You go play with it. I don't want it. Amen. And guess what he did? He took it <laughs> and went, went went and gave it to someone else. I don't know who, but it wasn't for, it wasn't for me. I didn't accept it. Amen. So I want to encourage you because your circumstance, your situation. It's nothing but a stepping stone for God to get you right in the position where he can do the work in your heart that he really wants to do. Amen. He, he, want, he wants to do a work in you. And he wants you to be he wants you to be equipped. He wants you to be ready. He wants you to be prepared for what he's about to do in your life. Now, are you ready? Do you are, are you in agreement with that? Amen. Because the Bible is not something that we can count slack. God will confirm his word with signs follow. Amen. God will confirm his word with signs follow. So now let's look at something here. Let's look at something here because you see, we are in a time where God is going to reveal himself in a very powerful way. Let's turn to the book of Acts chapter 10. We're going to start reading verse number 37. Acts chapter 10 verse number 37. Amen. Are y'all familiar with Acts chapter 10? <laughs> Good. Me too. Me too. Glory to God. And verse number 37 says, The words I say ye know, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and begun from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Verse number 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing what? Doing good. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. You see, God wants to touch you right where you are. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you 
free. Amen. Now, now you don't you want to be free? When I was sick, I tell you what, I wanted to be free, and God delivered me. He delivered me, and He set me free when I didn't have no clue what I was going to do. I had no clue what I was going to do, but God delivered me and set me free from that spirit of infirmity. Amen. Now let's look at another scripture. Let's look at the book of Luke, chapter 12. Amen. But see, when we, when we get into this word, you're going to find out that God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Luke chapter 12, and I want to start reading verse number 17. Luke chapter 12, verse number 17. And we're going to read through verse 19. And he brought with him, he brought, and he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to restore my goods, my fruit. This, this is Luke. Am I right? Chapter 12, verse number 17. Verse number 18 says, and he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barn and build greater. And there will be, and there will I store all my fruit and my goods. Huh? You did what? Yeah, talking about the rich man. That's right. Yeah, verse number verse number nineteen says, "And I will say to my soul, this is what he's saying now. And I will say to my soul, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease." And eat, take that eat, eat, drink, and do what? Be merry. <laughs> and be merry. How many of you know that when you take, when, when you when you try to, to store things up to, to carry you throughout life, that's going to come a point in life where that what you have stored up, it's, it's not going to be sufficient to supply your need. Because your need is going to go beyond, is going to out, your need is going to supersede that what you have stored up, amen. Because see, when you come under attack in your health, you can have all the goods, you can have all the money, but if you are in a position where you cannot be healed, and if the doctor said there's nothing I can do for you. All that you have stored up, it doesn't matter how rich you are, it doesn't matter how poor you are, it doesn't matter what you have, what you don't have. If you don't have Jesus Christ, everything that you thought that made a difference in your life, you're going to find out that it's coming to an end. And it's going to be passed on to someone else. Why? Because you put your trust in your riches. You put your trust in your in your in in your belongings. Amen. And God wants you to put your trust in him. And you know when you put your trust in God, you know what's going to happen? You're going to find out that God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Everything that God has said to you concerning your health and your life, God is able to bring it to pass. Amen. God is able to bring it to pass. So your circumstances, your situation, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be the, it's not gonna be the the end unless that what you base everything that you do on. Your healing is is still available. It's still available for you. 
Amen. Let's look at, let's look at, let me show you, let me look at something else here now. Amen. You see, some Christians are often asked, is it God's will for you to be healed? And I want you to know right now, without even thinking about it, that it is God's will for you to be healed. Amen. And I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what kind of I don't know what kind of situation you are facing. But I know that it is God's will for you to be healed. In the book of Mark, chapter one, verse number forty. In the book of Mark, chapter one, verse number forty. Let's start read verse number 29, 39, I mean. Verse number 39, it says, And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Notice what he's saying now. If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Amen. So if, if God wants to do something in this man's life, amen, and this man not knowing that God wants to do something in his life, and he come and he, and he come full of leprosy, knowing that he could possibly be stoned to death, amen, because he's He's coming, he's coming into a crowd of people, but yet he came with a with out of curiosity because he I could imagine he heard what Jesus had done. Amen. He heard about the miracles. I could imagine he, there was no other reason for him to come into that crowd. But he heard about this man. And he came and did what? Kneeled down at his feet. And he began to ask him, if thou wilt. Thou can make me clean. He said, in other words, if it's your will, you can make me clean. Amen. You can heal me. You can restore me. You can make me free. And that's the same question a lot of Christians even have today in the church. Because they've been sick so long. They've gone through so many trials. They've gone through so many situations. And they went to preacher after preacher. That was all good in itself, but one thing they lacked in their conquest for their healing, they lacked faith and believing on the word of God. Because the Bible tells us in Mark chapter 9, verse number 23 says, if thou canst believe, <clears throat> all things are possible to him that believe. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Now, I want to take you a look at something over here in the book of Luke, chapter 17. In the book of Luke, chapter 17, we just left Luke. Well, let's go back again. Luke, chapter 17. And I want you to look here. Luke, chapter 17. Look at verse number. Shit out of our kid. Verse number. Verse number. Verse number. Verse number. Verse number. Look at verse number three. He took heed, take heed to yourselves. If that if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Notice what the apostle said in verse number five of this same chapter here. The apostles, they realized that that was going to be annoying what, was, what, 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 what this man was talking about. So notice what he said. They asked, they asked Jesus to do what? They said, and the apostles said unto him, said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. See, God can increase your faith. Your faith must be, your faith must come in alignment with the word of God, with the will of God. Amen. Because notice what Jesus said to them when he when they said, hey, Lord, increase our faith. Notice what he said, verse number six. And the Lord said, if ye have faith of a grain of mustard seed, 
You might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, be thou planted into the sea, and it should obey you. Amen. Well, what is it obeying? Who is it obeying? Is it obeying you or is it obeying the word of God? It's obeying the word of God. That's right. It's obeying the word of God. And that's the same way with that sickness. God wants you to be so connected to him in faith and believing in your heart so that when you come to him, you when you begin to talk to him, you're going to know in your heart that he hears you. And when you know that he has heard you, you know that he has granted your petition. He has granted you your petition. God wants to bring you to a place in him that you've never been before. And it's up to you to get there. And how are you going to get there? Through faith. Through faith. Amen. Look at verse number 11. Same chapter, verse number 11. And it came to pass, as he went to the to Jerusalem, there he, was it, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were leopards. How many? Ten. Ten men that were leopards, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Now I like this, because he didn't have to go lay his hands on them. He didn't, they didn't run up on him for him to touch them like that one man did. But they saw, they saw that, that, that it was Jesus. And I could have, now they probably heard about that one leper man too. How, how he was healed. Amen. And, 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 and he said, Lord, if it be thy will, thou can make me clean. Amen. And I can imagine these, these other ten lepers, they heard about this man leaving the colony because he saw Jesus and he ran to he ran and fell down at his feet. I could imagine that could have been that could have been the case. It might not be, but it could. It's a, it, 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 it very, very, it very well could have been. You never know. But I like that. I like that. I like that because the, the, now we see these ten lepers here. We see these ten lepers not knowing whether or not it's in God's will for them to be healed, but yet listen at them. Listen at them how they crying out. Amen. Verse number thirteen, Luke chapter seventeen, verse number thirteen, and they lifted up their voice and said. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Amen. Verse number 14. When he saw them, he said unto them, Go show thyself, go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, and it came to pass that as they went, they were what? Cleansed. They were cleansed. Amen. They were cleansed. See, now I like that because you see here, you see, they believed what he said, and as they believed, and as they went, and as they was on the way to do, to follow the instruction that was given them, well, they saw that the Bible said they was cleansed of what? Of their leprosy. Of their leprosy. Now get this, get this right here. Get this part right here. They was cleansed of their leprosy. Amen. Verse number 15. And one of them, now it was it was 10 of them. It was 10 of them. But he said in verse number 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. Woo! Glory to God. When he saw that he was healed, he did what? He turned back. Oh my God. And with a loud voice. See, he gave a loud voice. Lord, thank you. thank you for your healing power. Thank you, Lord. I received. My God, you you said you went, went immediately when you said it. I was cleansed, and God, I I can't go no further be, before I thank you for what you've done for me. And Jesus, wasn't there ten of you? <laughs> oh my goodness! And I'm telling you. See, your circumstances is not your is not your end. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now. It doesn't matter what kind of circumstance you're facing right now. Only thing that matters right now is that you get your heart in the right place with God. That you believe the gospel. That you 
hold fast to what God has said because you see God's healing power is still in the earth today he hasn't taken it out just because just because you started to get up in age amen that same anointing that healed the sick raised the dead and cast out devils is still in the earth today working through those that have faith to believe amen glory to God so now look what it says right here look look at this right here verse number verse number 16 and that, now this, this man he turned around verse let's go back to verse number 15 and one of them which when he had, when he saw that he was healed turned back and with a loud voice same way he gave that loud voice amen in verse number Verse, what, verse number 13? Verse number 11? Because see, they, 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 with a loud voice, they hollered at Jesus. And then he said, go, go to, he, he told them what to do, go to the village. Amen. Because that's what he said in verse number 11. He said, and it came to pass that as he, and as he went to, as he went to Jerusalem, and he, he passed through the midst of Samaria, and Galilee, and then, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten lepers. Verse number twelve. See, there met him ten lepers, which stood afar off. Verse number thirteen, and lifted up their voice, and said, "Jesus, Master, have mercy on us." They lifted up their voice. Now, right here, verse number fifteen, there was one. That turned back and lifted up his voice again. Notice what he said. And one of them, which saw what had saw that the, that he was healed, turned back and and with a loud voice glorified God. Amen. See, he didn't. He wasn't calling God heal me. No, he was saying, God, thank you for your healing. I received my healing. My healing is manifesting right now. I insist my body is being cleansed, being cleansed of this leprosy. And so the man turned back and, and, and with a loud voice glorified God for what was done. Glorified God for what was done. And fell down on his face at his feet, saying, was giving, giving him thanks. And he, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, and Jesus answered, said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Where are the nine? They are not, they are not, they are not found. That return to give glory to God, save this stranger. See, this Samaritan was a, considered as a stranger. That's right. He was considered as a stranger because he was not a Jew. He was a Samaritan. And remember the woman at the well said the Samaritan has no dealing with what? With the Jews. So he was not a Jewish man. He was a, a Samaritan man. Glory to God. But you notice how the power of God works just as good with a, with a, 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 a Samaritan? <laughs> Amen. See, God is no respecter of person. He's no respecter of person. Amen. So that 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 anointing it worked on that Samaritan just as well as worked on the Jews. So it'll work on you sinners just as well as work on you that are not sinners that are not sinners. Amen. You that have been saved, it'll still it'll work on you. Those of you that have not been saved, it'll work on you. All you gotta do is believe it. Just believe it. Glory to God. Amen. 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 So verse number 17 said, And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are, they are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. And he said unto him. Now this is now this is this is the word of the Lord speaking to this man after he done after, after he done turned around and gave him thanks for what had, for what had taken place in his body. The Lord gave him. Oh my God, looked like a clean bill of health to me. Amen. So verse number 19, and, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has did what? 
has made thee whole. Has made thee whole. Has made thee whole. Remember what Jesus told the, 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 the disciples that will follow him when the, when, the, when the centurion came in and said, Lord, you don't need to come under my roof. Just speak the word only. Amen. And then this man started, he started explaining to Jesus why he don't need him to come under the roof, telling about his soldiers and all this stuff. And Jesus looked back at his disciples and said, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. In other words, not in any of you Jews. Okay. <laughs> Amen. So that's another example of how God is not concerned of your culture, your nationality, your country, or your, or your whatever, status. your status in life. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. Amen. But God is concerned about what you believe in your heart. This man believed it in his heart. He said, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. So your circumstances can turn if you're willing to turn your heart toward God and just simply believe. That left man that turned around out of the tent, the Bible said he, he humbled himself and he, he fell down at Jesus' feet. Amen. But he was still a far off from Jesus. But kneeling down on the ground is just like at his feet. Still at his feet. And Jesus said, wasn't that ten of your words tonight? They were nowhere to be found. And the Lord said to this man, go your way, behold, your faith has made you whole. Because when he turned around and gave thanks, he believed, he believed what God had did for him. He believed it so much to the point that he wanted to say thank you. And that he was healed of that plague. That leprosy had no power over him from that point on. Amen. He was what? He was healed and he was free. He was healed and he was free. Glory to God. I like that. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrew chapter 13 verse number 8. Amen. That Jesus Christ is what? The same yesterday today and forever. God doesn't change, folks. He is looking for a people that will just simply believe him. He's looking for a people that will believe him. Amen. Now look at Matthew chapter, chapter 9 with me. Matthew chapter 9. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now here goes Jesus through, going through the synagogue again. Amen. Preaching and teaching. But notice what he says right here. Glory to God. Now, now you know verse number 18 through 35 is all good. That's good. That's good reading. Amen. That's good reading. Let me see what time we got. Hmm, still got a few minutes. Glory to God. Let's go. Let, let me read verse number 35 first. Because that's, that's what we're actually aiming to proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. See, that's what Jesus does. And he wants you to be, he wants you to walk in this, he wants you to demonstrate what he's done. Amen. He wants you to walk out what he's done. Verse 35, and Jesus went about all Galilee, all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and doing what? Healing every sickness and every disease among the people. That's what Jesus did. And that was said in Acts chapter 38, verse chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all. Amen. Healing all. Amen. Well, that's what he's doing. He's going into that place, into the village, into the synagogue, and he's healing all. Verse number 18, the back of verse number 18. While he just spake those things unto them, behold, there coming a certain ruler of the city of the to, there's come a certain ruler and worship him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. Now this is man, this man got to be bold to come to Jesus when he knows that his daughter is already dead. This guy, this, this, this man is very bold. Amen. But look what he said though. But come and lay thy hands on upon her, and she shall be, that she shall live. Amen. And she shall live. Glory to God. See now, 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 what you call that? That's faith talking. 
He knows that his daughter is dead, but he's telling Jesus to come and lay his hands on her and she shall live. Amen. Verse number 19, and Jesus arose and followed him and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with the issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment for she said, knows what, knows what she's saying now, knows what she's saying now, for she said within herself, if I, oh, I like this, I like this, she's prophesying her, she's prophesying her healing. Verse number 20, Matthew, Matthew chapter 9, verse number 21, for she said within herself, if I may touch but his garment, I shall be whole. I shall be whole. Amen. But Jesus turned, amen, but Jesus turned him about and, and, and said, oh my God. Verse number 22. <laughs> Glory to God. But Jesus turned him about and when he saw her, he said, daughter, listen at this now. He said, be of good comfort. Your touch has made me whole. That's not what he said, is it? No, let me show you exactly what he said. He said, Jesus turned, him, Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Now, faith is so powerful that if we, can, if we know how to tap into that faith, that same faith that this woman tapped into made her whole. Amen. You see, what she did she 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 conceived this in her heart and she spoke it out of her mouth that's why jesus said you can say to the mountain you can say to the sycamine tree be thou moon be thou plucked up by the root and it should obey you the word of god has the power to cause it to be uprooted and that's what he does to that sickness he has this that word has to call it calls that sickness to be uprooted out of your body amen so I like what he said in verse number 22, Matthew chapter 9, verse number 22. And he said, but Jesus turned and Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, daughter, thy faith, with the be of good comfort, thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that very hour. From that very hour. She didn't have to wonder around, walk around going, is it ever going to happen? <laughs> She didn't walk around complaining that well, he said it was, he said that I'd be made whole, but I still I still feel the pain. I still oh, you see, you you got to get your eyes off the symptoms. You got to get your eyes off of the situation, your circumstances. Your circumstances is not your downfall. Your downfall is your unbelief. Amen. Your circumstances. Everybody encounters circumstances and situations, but how we go through these circumstances, how we deal with these circumstances and situations is what God is looking at. Your faith has the ability to bring you to a place where you will experience God's overflow in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Am I making any sense to you today? Hallelujah. I believe that God wants to touch someone tonight. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, verse number 23, and when Jesus came into the, the ruler's house and saw the, the, the ministers and the people making a, a noise, he said unto them, give place for she, for the maid is not dead. For the maid is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn. See, when people don't understand the power of God, they make fun at it. They laugh about it. They joke about it. Amen. Until they get sick. Until they need a, a touch from God. Now they don't got serious. <laughs> oh my God. Amen. I've seen people like this. Amen. As long as they feel all right, as long as they've been going good for them, they're gonna they're gonna make fun of what God does. They're gonna make fun of the of the preacher. They're gonna make fun of the of the one that's preaching this kind of message. They're gonna they're gonna do everything they can to discredit him, try to destroy him. 
Amen. But as soon as they come under attack, they're going to come knocking on your door. <laughs> they're going to come knocking on your door. Amen. Why? Because they want you to pray for them. They want you to lay your hand on them. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. So we see right in verse number, verse number, uh, uh, verse number 24, he said, and he said unto them, give place. The maid is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn. Verse number 25. And when he, when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand. And the maid arose and the and the fame thereof went abroad into all the land. See, this is why this is why it's so important that we hold fast to the word of God because it's the word of God that's going to bring the healing. It's the word of God that's going to bring the deliverance. It's the word of God that's going to set their captives free. It's the word of God that's going to bring restoration to your body. It's the word of God that's going to help you overcome those circumstances. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And I believe that God wants to touch you right where you are. Right where you are. Amen. Verse number 26 says, And the fame thereof went abroad unto all the land. <laughs> unto all the land. And when Jesus departed this, Two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. They heard about, they, they saw the miracle of Jesus raising this. They heard about what Jesus did in, this, in the ruler's house, how he raised up this, this girl from, from the dead, from a deathbed. Now here they are. If he can raise the dead, surely he can open the blind eye. If he can raise it in, I'm quite sure he can open blind eyes. So they begin to cry that Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. They begin to cry out for mercy. They begin to cry out for help. Amen. Why? Because they heard. Faith coming how? By hearing. And hearing by the word of God. They heard. Amen. Verse 27 again, and when Jesus departed from this, two blind men followed him, crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he saw, and when he was coming to the, the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I'm able to do this? Notice what he knows what how Jesus addressed him. He addressed their belief first. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Amen. He didn't ask them about, are you, are you doubting that, that what, what, what took place? No, he didn't say nothing about no doubt. He questioned, he asked them a question. Do you believe that I can do this? And knows what they said. Knows what they said. This is Matthew chapter 9, verse number, verse number 20, verse number 28. The latter part of the verse says, and they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Well, they, just, they said, well, uh, we just heard about it. We don't know if you're true or not, but we want to, we want to find out. <laughs> we want to test. We want, we want to put it to the test. And if, it, if it's true, then we will be. We will get it. And if it's not true, we're going to walk away the same way. We ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> you, you know how people talk like that? Amen. Glory to God. But notice what he said, verse number, verse number, verse number twenty-nine. And he touched, and he touched, and touched he their eyes, saying, according to what? Your faith. According to your faith. According to what you believe. Amen. Not according to your circumstances. Not according to your pain. Not according to your situation that you're in. Amen. But he said, but according. To your faith. He said, be it unto you. And notice now, because they because he 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 he, he located them earlier. Amen.
because they said do, he said do you believe that you and the blind man the blind man came to him and, and Jesus said unto him believe ye that I can do that I'm able to do this verse number 28 and we see in verse number 29 it says and he touched then touched he their eyes and he said to them because he just qualified them in verse number 28 now in 29 he is bringing them right to the point of their miracle and, and he said according to your faith since you said you believe that I'm able to do this, according to your faith, be it unto you. Oh, Sheila of My God, I'm telling you, that took every circumstance out of the way. That took every, every, every circumstance, every trial, every tribulation, that took it all out of the way. The word of God come forth in his strength and power, and the eyes of those men were both open. Amen. Notice what it said right verse number 30. And their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that that see that no man knoweth, but that but but they went, but they when they were departed, spread it abroad, spread abroad his fame in all that country. See, word Travel. travels fast because when a, something so significant as one been raised from the dead, then something so significant as one as blind eyes being healed, I'm telling you, the power of God is available right now to heal and to deliver and to set the captives free. God wants to touch you right where you are. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to make you whole. Hallelujah. <clears throat> there is no circumstance strong enough or big enough to stop the hand of God when you make up your mind to believe. When you make up your mind to believe. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now that's powerful, folks. That's powerful. Can I take you to one more scripture before I go? Before I, before I stop? I want to take you to one more scripture. Matthew chapter 12. Still in Matthew, but this time we're going to chapter 12. Amen. Matthew chapter 12. And let's start reading verse number 9. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue, and behold, there came a man which had a withered hand. See, we're talking about the miracles that Jesus did during this time. And they asked him, saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath day? That they might accuse him. And he said unto them, what man shall have a, what man, a, what man sh shall there be among you that shall have a sheep? And if it fall into the pit on the Sabbath day, will he not hold, lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do good, to do well on the Sabbath day. Notice how they tried to capture him, trying to, trying to take him with his words. That, now, he operated in the wisdom of God, how he explained that. Now, notice verse number 13 says, And said, then said he, then said he unto them, unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was what? Restored whole, like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and healed, and held a counsel against him, how they might destroy him. Verse number 15, but when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from this, and great multitude followed him. See, God, when God sent you on your mission, when God sent you on your work, and 
and you and, and you out there, you doing, you following God's will, you following God's commandment, you you carrying out His assignment, and the enemy tried to trap you up. God is going to give you a way of escape. He's going to show. He's going to give you a way of an escape. Amen. They won't be able to lay hands on you. Jesus Christ is a prime example of that. They take it. They take him to the hill of the of the of the of the of the of the of the, of the, of the cliff and want to throw him off. And what did he do? He passed right through them without them even touching him. Why? Because it was not his time. God wants you to know that it's not your time. Your sickness, your circumstance that you are facing, your situation that you are facing, that you are dealing with, is not to take you out. This is not your time. I'm going to pray for you right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Someone, you listen to this program, you just went to the doctor, and he gave you a bad report. And your faith just went right out the back door because of what the doctor said. The doctor gave you a bad report concerning your colon. He said you have colon cancer. And right now, by the authority of him who have called me, I cancel those words that's been spoken over your body, over your health, in the name of Jesus. Father, I rebuke that colon cancer. I bind it up right now in the name of Jesus. I bind it down to its root. And in the name of Jesus, I command it to be plucked up and cast away, cast off that person right now in Jesus' name. And God, you said in your word. That if I have faith as a grain of mustard seed, I can say to the sick man, you beat out plucked up by the root. And it should obey me. I speak to that colon cancer, and I command you to be plucked up by the root right now. And leave that person. Never touch him again. Father, I thank you. Oh, shit, I love my Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And I consider that's done. I don't know who you are. But I got that word right before I got up to preach. And now I'm releasing that word so that you can receive. If you have faith, you're not going, it's not going to affect you. If you receive this word as though God is speaking directly to you, it will not affect you. God has spoken it. I believe it. And that sells it. Amen. It's time for us to take our evening offering. Those that want to give, you're welcome to give. You go to my website, LabbergerMinistries.com. LabbergerMinistries.com. And you can sow your seed in faith. Amen. And know that God is with you. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you, Lord God. We believe, Father, that your word will not return void. And we believe, Father, that all things do work together for good to them that love you, to those who call according to your purpose. I bless your people, Father. I thank you for what you're doing in their lives. I thank you, Father, for the miracles that we read about tonight, how Jesus, in the midst of their circumstances, showed them that this was not the end. This was not the end for them. 
and God, they all was healed. They were all healed and set free. Father, I thank you that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish that which pleases you. I bless your people now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I bless your people. Now, Father, as we give, you said it shall be given unto us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give to our bosom. And then you said, Father, with the same measure that we meet with all, it shall be measured to us again. Father, you also said, there is no lack, for our God supply, for my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And Father, I thank you for that, Lord God, because your word will not return void. As we give from the bottom of our heart, God, you're going to pour it back into our lives. God, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you for it. In Jesus' name, we love you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your gift, for your tithes and your offering. Glory to God. Amen. So listen, folks. If you if you have a, a seed you want to sow, sow that seed. Sow it in faith. And believe what God has said. And God is able to bring it to pass. We love you. We thank God for you. Now, those of you that, that are that are believing for salvation or believe to rededicate your life to the Lord right now, I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for them in Jesus' name, for those that are that are, that are, that are rededicating their life to you, Father, for those that are coming to you for the very first time. I lift them up before you, Father, and God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that you would touch, that you would minister to them, that you would bring them to a place, Father, where the peace of God that's a passive of all understanding will keep their heart and their mind in Christ Jesus. If I'm talking to you right now, you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, or maybe you have, but you backslid, you live in a you, you, you lukewarm. You want to get back on fire. You want to come back to God. You want to rededicate your life to God. If that's you, I'm talking to you right now. God wants to do it for you right now. He wants to set you on fire for the kingdom of God. Amen. Say this prayer for me. If you never said this prayer before, you never asked Jesus Christ to come in your, in your heart before, right now I'm asking you to say it right now. Say it because God is asking you to let him in. And if you open the door and let him in, He's going to come in. He's going to suck with you and you with him. Amen. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God and that you died for my sin. Today, I confess my sin and I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. Amen. If you just said that prayer, I believe that this day is going to be the best day for the rest of your life. You remember this day because this is the day your life was changed. This is the day you caused the angels to rejoice. This is the day that God looked upon you and smiled and said, that's my child. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So if anyone right here now need prayer right now, I pray for you right now. Anyone need prayer right now, I pray for you right now. Amen. Everybody okay? So let's pray for these that are with us by the internet. Father, we pray for those that are with us by the internet, God. We thank you, Lord, that your hand rests upon us, Lord God, each and every one of us, Father. And God, I pray that you will watch over your word that was spoken tonight, God, that you confirm your word with miracles, signs, and wonders. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you're touching people with colon cancer. You're touching people with colon cancer. And God, I thank you that it's done now in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you on Tuesday night. God bless. Bye-bye.